Today, you can furnish your entire home without even squishing a cushion. Through the wonders of virtual reality, online payments, and modern delivery expectations, we now see it as normal to order a dining room table and chairs to your front door. Direct to consumer furniture is here, and with it comes the good and the bad. All right, now before we get into this video about furniture, I have to acknowledge that I'm not an interior designer and that this is not even my house. Now you might have noticed that this background is rarely the same in our videos and that's because for the last eight months we've been shooting out of Airbnbs all across North America while I'm traveling on my other channel. But if I lived in this house, I would have a lot more furniture options today than I ever would have in all of human history. I also probably wouldn't have chosen that lamp. It's like a, it's like a, like a, a ram or, or something with gold. Anyway, just ignore that. So there's a pretty good chance that if you're watching this video, you've purchased some furniture through an online furniture retailer like Wayfair, or even one of these new modern ones with sleek names like Joybird, West Elm, Polly and Bark, Burrow, and of course, the most famous one here on YouTube, Article. These brands have now made it normal to furnish your home digitally, and while buying products sight unseen is never recommended, it is nothing new. Now we've been doing this whole delivery thing for quite a while, since at least the 18th century when Ben Franklin started selling mail order books through catalogs. But with the advent of the internet, you could say that things got a little out of control. It is now possible to have your groceries, a new car, or a mattress materialize on your doorstep at the click of a button. We've made a whole video about the Casper mattress situation and their leap into this world, and now we are taking the natural next step in the progression into furniture. Now, if you've seen that last video or you understand the DTC acronym, I'm not going to get too repetitive here, but we need to understand the basics of what's going on. Ever since the Industrial Revolution and the mass production of goods, manufacturers in large part stopped selling their own stuff, opting instead to sell wholesale to retailers. The problem here is that the more people you add into the equation, the more expensive a product becomes. Every group involved has to make a bit of money, so at the end of the day, instead of paying $40 for a stool from a local carpenter, you're stuck paying $40 to the manufacturer, plus like an additional $40 to $80 to the retailer. This does vary a bit from industry to industry, but in general, it's probably safe to assume that you're going to be paying double the wholesale price for any given item. The internet disrupted the friggin' heck out of this. And today, online business is just kind of a no-brainer. There's no shop to rent or maintain, there's no staff to pay, so they can put all that money into other things, which we're going to be talking about later. So this business model is what has allowed brands like Amazon to completely take over the shopping world, and for specific brands like Casper to obliterate their competitors in their niche. However, it is not without its setbacks. So why are we talking about furniture? Well, large furniture is one of the last product classes to really find success in this world. Even Amazon was shy to touch this market because who the hell wants to figure out how to ship a full-size leather Chesterfield and then inevitably deal with the return when the person who bought it realizes that their cat hates the color or whatever. And this is probably the biggest and probably the most problematic challenge with direct-to-consumer furniture. Due to its sort of huck and pray industry standards, companies have pretty much had to offer incredible return policies. Otherwise, nobody's going to sink $2,000 into accounts that they have never sank into. Sink. They also make things easier by finding ways to make products more visualizable. Plenty of pictures, detailed measurements and descriptions, reviews galore, and even the use of tools like augmented reality. The idea here is that you can help picture what a product's going to look like in your home to make you less afraid to leap into that unknown. The VR thing is pretty cool. Like the fact that you can just be like, oh, I wonder what this couch looks like. Shlink. Oh. 
It looks terrible. But all of this effort doesn't seem to stop 15 to 40% of all online orders getting returned. Combine this with the fact that landfill waste from household items and furniture has been increasing dramatically, and it's not hard to draw some conclusions. Not only is shipping a product back and forth to a customer who changed their minds annoying, but it just ends up in the landfill at the end of the day, and we're talking about a huge amount of wasted time, energy, and resources for something that was supposed to be convenient. But despite all the logistical hurdles, the gold rush of online furniture sales was a unique opportunity for the bold and the brave. Wayfair actually got its start in furniture specifically because nobody else wanted to touch that market for so long. Without any serious competitors, all they had to do was figure out how to make it work. But since then, a bunch of companies have flooded into the market despite a lot of its really obvious challenges. And yet, despite all this, it still kind of sucks. The problem with DTC furniture is that pretty much everything it's good for is called into question when you think about it for like even just a second. Starting with the incredible selection. There is nothing more intimidating than realizing that you have literally any possible variation, color, style, length, name, and price at your fingertips. We all want the ability to choose, but when it comes down to interior design, especially for those of us who realistically don't have any idea what we're doing, too many options can make us anxious, overwhelmed, and can contribute to bad decision making, not to mention the waste of time. Now, instead of looking at one little furniture store, we've got the entire world to deal with. Thankfully, there's reviews at least, right? Come on, we can depend on those. Except, it turns out that some of those reviews might actually be fake. Yes, review farms are a real thing, and apparently such a profitable one that coordinated online reviews has become its own industry. In fact, if you are to believe the World Economic Forum, fake reviews scam us out of $152 billion a year for lackluster products, which seems kind of bananas. Let us know if you want a full dedicated video on that subject because I that blew my mind, honestly. Okay, but say the reviews are legit and you are the 1% of humanity that knows what you want. And when you see what you want, you just add it to your cart. You go right to the checkout without any second guesses. And at this point I have to say like, what's your name? Like, how you doing? You know, I like your energy. I like, I like what you're, like what you're doing here. Sorry, sorry. So anyway, yeah, you're this super good looking, confident, informed, future-proof subscriber who's just used every last ounce of your imaginative juice to pull the trigger on what is going to be a new office desk in the corner of your living room. After a few weeks, it's delivered. You assemble it yourself with ease because you're a 10 out of 10, but it doesn't quite match what you're going for. Do you care enough to send it back? Are you gonna pack it all into the box? Because here's the thing, sexy pants. These returns are rarely easy. They often cost money, and even if they are free, it can take some real effort to get your furniture disassembled, repackaged, and then posted. So in many cases, the company that sold you the product is kind of banking on the fact that you're not gonna send it back and might even incentivize you not to. They often won't risk being outright annoying about a return unless you have a dreaded one-star review in your back pocket, but they may just charge you extra things like a repackaging fee if you throw out the original box or cap you at one free return per household. Fast Company has made a fairly convincing argument that this kind of sight unseen shopping has been conditioning us over the last century or so to lower our expectations. Because think about it, when you go into a furniture store and you see the multi-thousand dollar price tags, you're not going to settle for anything less than pretty much exactly what you want. But after the agony of online shopping and with those slightly more appealing price tags, you might not care as much that this couch that just arrived at your house is a little bit too soft than what you would like. This online experience is a big chunk of what is becoming known as fast furniture. Just like the fast fashion world, we're learning to shop for furniture based on fleeting trends and low prices rather than durability and timelessness. Wayfair is a great example of this. They're not about selling a few well-designed classic items that'll work across a variety of life stages. Instead, they're constantly updating a massive catalog with millions of products that encompass all the latest trends made for every budget, which in many cases is just code for built with low quality materials by exploited people in another country. Combine this with the reality that we as a generation are constantly connected to the internet and bombarded with targeted ads all day long and you've got quite a recipe for impulse buying. It just doesn't feel like as big of a deal anymore to order a new bedroom set on a whim. It's as easy as the click of a button, which just 
usually isn't a great thing to do when it comes to furniture. So what is the result of this little cocktail that we've made for ourselves? It's a shit. Get this, the EPA estimates about 9 million tons of furniture ends up in the landfill every year. A number that seems to keep going up over time despite advances in recycling. That's about 5% of total landfill waste. And according to one expert, most of that furniture was made in the last 10 to 15 years. Here's a personal question. How many of you have grandparents who have been using the same kitchen table since before your parents were even born? Meanwhile, our generation is throwing out literal mountains of Ikea crap in a decade or less. We did a whole video about the problem with Ikea if you are interested in that also. Okay, and listen, I know that shit is weird right now, but I'm bummed that quality stuff just isn't normal anymore. Like I grew up in a house where my dad was a cabinet maker and I just honestly had really nice, good quality furniture around all all the time. And the thing is, it's amazing. With good quality stuff, time just makes them better. And there's a feeling that you get when the stuff that you have is dependable, you know? But not everyone has my old man and a 3,000 square foot shop in the middle of the woods somewhere. And thankfully, not everything online is totally trash. In general, of course, it is always going to be easier to determine quality in person. However, there is a case for DTC furniture making furniture more available. Cheaper prices and accessibility of DTC products means that higher end ethical quality furniture might be more available for those who otherwise wouldn't have had the money to buy it. And more and more today, people are discovering that they want to buy from brands that focus on the future. As one example, a local company from Vancouver, where I used to live, called Chop Value, makes furniture out of used chopsticks, which is pretty neat, and a registered B Corporation to boot. Other companies like Article or Fully, who we've worked with in the past, exist specifically to create quality pieces at a more affordable price, which is just not something you can do easily when you rely on brick and mortar retailers. Now that being said, none of these options are going to be as economical or sustainable as buying used. Just throwing the idea out there. But hey, we wanna thank you for spending your time with us here on Future Proof. Viewers like you help us make free videos for you, so consider liking, subscribing, and coming around next week for another video. You are the 1% of humanity that knows what you want, when you want to see, what, when, and when you see what you want, you, 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 okay. you